Can you make bacon without nitrites? Of course you can, but is it any good? So I've been curing bacon at home for some time now and I've done it with nitrites and without nitrites. Every time I've done it without nitrites, I've had this niggling voice in my head that says, Philip, you know, that's not proper bacon. But to be fair, I couldn't compare it against anything at the time. And it could be the fact that I knew I'd left what's considered to be an important ingredient out of that process. So I wanted to do a side-by-side -side split test to actually see and taste the difference. Mainly there are two different types of bacon, the first being back bacon which comes from the pork loin and then there is the streaky bacon which comes from the pork belly. I'm using the pork belly, the skin has already been removed and I'm just carefully removing the bones trying to leave as much meat on there as possible. Now as we're doing a side-by-side -side comparison for this, I'm going to need two pieces from this pork belly and they will both be cured separately. So we're going to be doing an equilibrium brine, which means it's going to be extremely accurate and both pieces of pork will be treated the same way. Now it's very important that you weigh these and you make a note of their weight. Okay, so first up we're going to be doing the nitrite cure. My piece of pork weighed 652 grams. I need 2.5% salt, which is 16.3 grams. I need 1.25% sugar, which is 8.15 grams. And I need 0.25% of the nitrite salt, which is 1.63 grams. So next up the cure that just uses salt and sugar. The salt content of this is 11.9 grams and the sugar content is 5.93 grams. It's time to apply the dry cure to the pork. Now try to get this as evenly distributed as possible. So on the top, the bottom, and then just make sure that you sprinkle those sides and make sure that it's worked in nicely. Now you are gonna lose a bit of salt out onto the work surface or the plate, but all you need to do is just use the pork just to mop up all of the salt that's left. And as it starts to give off moisture, it's gonna become sticky and it's gonna be no problem to pick that up. Okay, so into a large Ziploc bag with a piece of pork and then we're just going to wrap it up nice and tightly and close the bag up before it goes into the fridge. And then we're going to repeat exactly the same process with the other piece of pork. Now I've clearly labelled these as we're doing the side-by-side -side comparison and they're going to go into the fridge for seven days and then about every day you're just going to turn them over. So what was facing up is now going to be facing down. After the seven days are up, we need to give the pork a good rinse off just to get any of the cure off the outside. And then after that, lay them onto a wire rack and give them a good pat down so you can get rid of any of that excess moisture. Okay, I'm gonna label these up so I don't get them muddled up. And here in the side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the one that uses the Instacure number one definitely has more of a pink hue. Now we're gonna get these into the fridge on the rack, not covered, so they've got good air circulation, and they're gonna dry out and firm up for the next 48 hours. After that, we can see the one that uses the Instacure number one definitely has more of a pink color. Interestingly, with the slicing comparison, you can't see too much difference. So this piece that uses the Instacure definitely looks like the colour that we associate with bacon. Interestingly, when you look at the next piece that doesn't use the Instacure, you can see that above and below that central piece of fat that's in my right hand, the meat definitely doesn't look as pink into the pan with both pieces of bacon and at this stage there is no noticeable difference whatsoever. However, when we flip this bacon you can see that the one above that uses no cure definitely has more of a grey colour while the one that uses Instacure below has that rosy pink colour. But I have to say straight off the bat, the no nitrite bacon is grey when it's cooked. There is no getting away from that. But the one with nitrites is the rosy red colour that we have come to associate with bacon. There is no getting away from that. Is the grey colour a good thing or a bad thing? For me, it just it doesn't look like bacon. But I have to say, 
I cooked the one with no nitrites first and it smelt like bacon. I was salivating and my brain was saying, hey, you know, you're getting ready for a piece of bacon. That's really important to mention. No nitrites first. Crispy. Nicely salted. Not dry. Still nice and moist. Yeah, you know, everything's telling you it's bacon when you first start to eat it, but gradually, more and more pronounced, the, the salted pork flavor comes through for me. It's, ju it's just not quite there. It really isn't. I mean, it tastes good. And I think if you want to cut nitrites out, then this could be the way to go. Let's try the one with nitrites. Mm. Okay. There's no comparison in taste. I can't completely knock the one with no nitrites because, you know, it's pretty good. And as I said, if you're looking for an alternative and you just want to cut them out of your uh, diet completely, then maybe that'll work with you. But certainly when you try them side by side, there is something really, really special about this bacon. Um, again, the salt balance is really good. Wow. Wow. Okay, so please don't be shy. Let me know in the comments what you think about this process. Have you tried this process at home? What are your thoughts on nitrites? What are your thoughts on manufactured bacon versus curing bacon at home? I'm really interested, so please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video and you found the content useful, please do click subscribe, click the little bell icon so you get notified for future videos, and I will see you again very soon.